there has been a disengagement with the nationalist communities from what might be seen as the forces of law and order. And that within nationalist communities, there has always been a tradition of trying to deal with minor crime, if you want to call it. That was tried to be dealt with sort of internally within our own communities for a long, long time. There are many people who are much more at home or comfortable with local vigilante type justice or paramilitary style justice. I was uh, by and large, large amounts of grass and smoking it with my friends and they class had us drug dealing. They just they wanted to shoot me over. Martin was drug dealing, stealing, joyriding. Martin had been pursued by three different paramilitary organisations, one of which said they were going to execute him. They tried to kill Martin. We intervened. We asked them if we could deal with Martin and make him see that what he was doing was wrong and it was a, uh, an attack on his own community. And if they were, were satisfied at the end of that, uh, they would love to threat against Martin. I was about 14 and got a threat. Um, I got a threat from a certain group. And oh, it was terrible, knowing that there's nothing you can do for your own son. And everywhere you go, people didn't want to know. And then it came to Hugh then, a time to choose, uh, and uh, with, with their help to get Jamie on the straight and narrow, and the worst that's behind it. We have made it very clear, and we state constantly, that violence is not the answer. And nine times out of ten, you usually find that there is a willingness, at least on both sides, to step back from the brink. And the paramilitary groups tend to say, look, we're not really out here to shoot people just for the sake of it. It's the behaviour that we want to stop. And if the person's willing to stop the behaviour, then there's no need for the threat.